Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out-of-control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, JK Amazie, Certified Sex and Porn Addiction Recovery Coach. Welcome to the episode. Today, we're going to talk about normalizing your reboot, which means making the experience of being free from your out of control behavior and all the positive things that come with it, making that an absolutely normal part of your life. Right now, what is normal for you is probably periods of quote-unquote sobriety followed by slips and relapses, loss of clarity, loss of focus, guilt, shame, uncertainty about your ability to control this behavior, which leads to low self-esteem. However, for many of the brothers who listen to this podcast, I know that you experience periods of time where you do not slip, there are no relapses, and You really enjoy these moments. You know that there's something different about the quality of your life. Maybe you're not quite able to put a finger on it or describe it, but you do know that it is much better, much more peaceful. Life flows in a much smoother way when it is not interrupted by any of the things that come with a relapse to pornography or masturbation or any other out-of-control sexual behavior that you might have. So here's the thing. In 2022, I want you to experience the year as a year of normalizing staying off pornography. I want that to be your new norm. I want the entire year to be like that for you. And I'm going to show you a couple of basic ways that you can do that. The first thing is to change the way you actually view the moments when you are not acting out. Acting out means engaging in that problematic sexual behavior. There are two ways you can view them. You can view it with what I call a big deal energy. Like, oh my God, it's been, I can't believe, I I just counted and it's been two months or it's been two weeks or maybe for you, it's been just a couple of days. Like, wow, I can't believe that I've been away from my behavior. I haven't, I haven't logged onto that website. I haven't broken a boundary. I haven't done that for this amount of time. This is a big deal. The problem with this quote unquote big deal energy is that it is repellent to staying off your behavior. It's kind of like if you were to take a woman that you put on a pedestal out on a date. You're just like, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm going out with this woman or I matched with this woman on the dating app. Like she's so gorgeous. She's so beautiful. Well, what happens is you start giving off these cues, maybe in the way you text her to set up the date. I'm talking about to the single guys here, where you text her to set up the date, the way you act on the dates, you give off a little bit of a needy energy, an attached energy. Uh, I don't want to lose this because this is so rare and it means so much to me. And you end up repelling her. She doesn't text you back. She doesn't reach back and you wonder what's wrong. But you do it again and again and again. The same goes maybe for those of you who are married, running a business in a particular type of career, and you get an opportunity. A big client account comes your way. Or there's an opportunity to make a certain amount of of money in a month that you've never made before. And then you make it a big deal. You're like, oh my God, we've never been this close to having such a great month. This is amazing. This is, oh, let's not screw anything up. This is great. Oh, this client is coming my way. Oh, there's such a big deal. There's such a big deal. I'm going to do everything perfectly. And you end up somehow sabotaging it. Why? Because big deal energy is repellent to the things that you desire in your life. And when you do that with what you desire when it comes to rebooting, you are quite naturally going to repel it. The opposite of big deal energy is what I call of course energy. Well, of course this is happening to me because this is the way it's supposed to be. 
this is the way my life is supposed to be. I'm supposed to be on a date with a gorgeous woman like that. So if I'm supposed to be with her, and this is the way it is, I don't need to act needy. I already prepped myself mentally that this is what I'm going to be having in my life. Oh, well, of course that client account was going to come my way. Of course our revenue was going to be this much this month. This is what it's supposed to be every month. Of course I got a raise at the end of the year in my career. This is, of course I got a promotion. I've been working hard. I believe in myself. I've been great with everybody I work with. I'm talented. I have the skills. Of course. So that is, of course, energy, which is what attracts that to your life. And you have to choose which one you're going to live in. Of course, you might experience big deal energy as a little bit of excitement and adrenaline rush. But brother, don't make it a bigger thing. Don't hold on to it. The minute you experience big deal energy, just relax and let that big deal energy go. Oh, of course. Transform it into of course. So you might be like, well, JK, that's great. How do I develop this of course energy in my life when it comes to my reboot? I've been struggling with this behavior for decades. I'm in my 30s, I'm in my 40s, I'm in my 50s, I'm in my 60s. Like, how do I do that? It's always a big deal when I get to this amount of time. Though I notice it's been a week since I didn't have the urge to look at anything sexual. Well, here are three ways to do that. The first way is appreciate, show gratitude for the little that you already have. So let's say that you realize that this week, You've been able to overcome or be self-aware or observe your urges without giving in to them. And you've been able to do that for a couple of days. Have gratitude. Literally, just be like, I am so grateful that for the past couple of days, despite the strength of my urges, I was able to just be aware of them and I let them pass. In the past, I would definitely give in to this. Now, I don't know what's happening. Maybe it's because I just joined JK's program. Maybe it's because I started following the things that he was sharing in the podcast and actually put together some sort of plan for myself. I don't know why. doesn't matter. What matters is that I am grateful that this is happening to me now. If it was, if we were to use the context of finances for the married guys and it was something like, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that we're having a wonderful month. I'm grateful that I got this promotion. I'm grateful that I'm being considered for a raise. Gratitude is the energy and the mental state that you want to put out because you are not attached to it. Gratitude implies that you understand it's an appreciation. It increases the value of something without you being attached to it, but you're increasing the value of a very little thing. Gratitude appreciation, something increases in value. You take that tiny thing and you're like, I'm very, very thankful for it. And the more often that you are grateful for the little things that come your way, the more you normalize them when the bigger things come your way, because you've built up the habit of doing so, appreciating the little things. The second way is to put yourself in the right community. If you are not in a community of people who are living the way you want to live, who are living those quote unquote big deal things as an off course in their life, the more likely you are to see that thing as a big deal. And this is very important. You have to do these three things, not just pick one of them. Again, you have to do the three things I'm going to share with you. You have to have gratitude, first of all. But secondly, you have to be in a community of men who are like, yeah, of course we don't, we don't care. <laughs> We don't give in to pornography. Like it's, we have better things to do. Of course, we use coping strategies. Of course, when you experience an urge, you should overcome it. Like we understand you experience urges, but you don't have to give in to it. This is this is normal. You will get to the stage. The same goes for the career and the business aspect. When you spend time with people in your career who are performing at a certain level, they are high performers. When you spend time with people who are making a certain amount of revenue in their business or who are delivering their service with excellence, very high quality of delivery, it becomes, of course, energy because these are the people you're spending time with. I was off for one of my annual Vegas trips. I do two a year for our close group of friends. And as I've mentioned in some podcast episodes in the past, this is pretty much my only quote unquote 
extended social time in a year with my friends because we live in all across the U.S. and I think one or two of them lives outside the U.S. And so it was great hanging out with them because everyone was doing well, not in all aspects of their life, but when it came to sexual control, it was great. We hung out, had a great time. They brought along some of their own friends. I met new people, people who lived the same way. So it was fun times with them, sexual control. Nobody was doing drugs. Nobody there drank. In fact, as a matter of fact, I think out of everybody, there was just me and maybe two other gentlemen who were actually new to that group consumed alcohol. Even at that, there was control of that. We had way more alcohol than we needed just there. Like, why did we even, you know, why did we even buy all this alcohol? We thought everyone would drink, but turns out most of the people in the group didn't drink, which was wonderful. Financially and in business and the career, everybody was a top performer. And it was just so nice because I spend quite a bit of time on my own as an introvert and as somebody who enjoys working. It was so good to be around that and it reinforced my off course energy. I was like, wow, like in retrospect, I didn't have friends like this. So it's a wonderful thing to be around people like this. And the third thing is a system. These things are not going to happen by accident. You are going to see things as a big deal when they happen as random acts. We don't know how this month happened. I don't know how this girl ended up being interested in me and going on a date with me. I don't know how I'm getting this reference for a promotion or a raise. I don't know how I got to like, uh, you know, this amount of time. I don't know how I'm able to just deal with my urges right now and, and not give in to my out of control behavior. If you don't know how it happens, it will always be a big deal because you're not going to be able to replicate it. And thus you need a system. When you have a system, again, it is something which is predictable. It is something which is reliable. Reliable means that it is not going to break down on you. Predictable means you're going to be able to sit here right now and look into the future. And with a certain amount of accuracy, you know how things are going to be, which is, of course, energy. Of course, we're going to get there because in the present, it is reliable. And when we look to the future, it is predictable. The reliability is predictable. So of course, we're, we're going to be staying off this behavior if we keep doing these things. Of course, we're going to keep going on dates with gorgeous women if we keep doing these things, taking care of ourselves, being high value, being social and funny, not being needy, and so on and so forth. Of course, we're going to keep getting promoted. Of course, clients and the highest quality clients are going to want to patronize my business. Of course, the quality of our service is going to keep improving month after month after month because we are following a system. So gentlemen, that is it. That is how you normalize staying off pornography. Gratitude for the moments that you experience what you want, as tiny as they are, the right community, that is the second thing, of people who live with, of course, energy. And finally, a system, something that is predictable, something that is reliable, so that you know that this is the way things are going to be. And you can sit in comfort and predict that things will be this way as long as you follow the system. And these are the three things that I want you to bring into 2022, because I want this to be normal for you. Listen, you may have been listening to this podcast for I don't know how long, but honestly, it's not a good look for me. If you're listening to this podcast and you've listened to a whole bunch of them, but nothing significant has changed in your life, you've got to start implementing. And I know these three things, they sound simple. There are a lot of steps to them. The easiest one to implement would be gratitude. We have a way of doing that within the porn reboot system. We even have worksheets for that and a way to anchor it as a habit in your life. The right community. You don't need to get into any of our paid programs, but at least join the porn reboot Facebook group. 
the free group. So you can be in there. You can interact with me once in a while. You can interact with Reboot Strategist and Reboot Hero. And we have some guys who are pretty advanced in the stage of their reboots, who were never in the implementation or the intensive program, but are right there in the porn reboot group. Some of them came from 12 steps. Some of them came from many years of therapy, but they have made certain accomplishments. There's some maturity in their reboots. You can learn a lot from them. Many of them are living with that, of course, energy. And of course, the system you can implement on your own. It does take a longer time to do so. But if you want to shorten the learning curve, then being in the right community helps. So this could be being in our free group or getting on a call with one of our reboot strategists to see if you're a good fit for the program. Either way, doesn't matter to me. What matters is that you're following the system and we get more and more men out there who are making staying off pornography a normal thing. Because gentlemen, think about it. Like, why shouldn't it be a normal thing in our life? Why shouldn't it be normal for us to actually spend more time sexually in intimacy with our partners, with people we actually care for? Why shouldn't it be normal that we meditate or we observe our breath or we go to the gym or we do something which is healthy for us emotionally or engage with somebody who is healthy for us anytime we experience a strong emotion. Why should we be running to pornography? Why should we be running into the bathroom and jerking off? That is not normal, gentlemen. So let's normalize this. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out of control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, The Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom. 